Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with you with a look at our ag commodity trade. And of course, we do have the ag trade off and running right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at our prices and uh, see how the grain markets look at this time. Uh, we have the corn market down about seven and a half cents on that nearby July contract. And as I mentioned in the uh, previous half hour, the July as of last Friday is now in delivery mode. So keep that in mind. And we uh, currently have the December contract seven and a half lower at 363 and three quarters within a penny of our low of the day. In the soybean trade here this morning, we currently have the August contract down 11 and three quarters at 851 and three quarters, about a penny and a uh, penny and a quarter from its low of the day and well off its earlier high from last night by about 16 cents. And November down 12 and a half at 867 and a half. In the wheat trade, the wheat market in Chicago has September down nine and a half at 491 and three quarters. What a colossal turnaround that is. That's down about uh, 17 cents or 18 cents off our overnight high. Uh, Kansas City wheat on September currently trading six and a quarter lower at 482 and a quarter on the uh, low of the day, a brand new low for the day. Last time we checked, it was actually higher. In Minneapolis wheat, we have the September contract now trading two and a quarter higher at 539, so it's kind of in its own little world. In the cotton market, by the way, we'll take a look at December, and it's now down 15 points at 83.77. Chris Swift joins us. He's in studio, and uh, he's with Swift Trading Incorporated in Nashville. How you doing? Doing great, Martin. How are you this morning? I'm doing fine. Good. What's with the grain market this morning? Well, I think really good weather. We got some hot, dry weather coming up, and after some of the rains that we had last week that went through most of the corn and soybean belts, it's probably just good growing weather. Um, I think the tariff issues are still fresh on everybody's mind and after reading as much as I could over the weekend, there's a lot of optimism for it to be uh, renegotiated. Uh, but yet I've not seen anything yet that says that they are re renegotiating. So. so July 6th would be the day, right? Supposedly that's when the tariffs go into effect. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of folks wondering if something will happen on uh, July 5th. Or right, like at exactly. Or exactly. Thereabouts. And I think the markets are very nervous with that. And we've seen a tremendous amount of volatility both up and down. So. That, uh, that doesn't help anything. So the question this morning was, had they already factored it into the market? Apparently not enough. Maybe not. You know, if you look, beans were down 20%. The tariff was supposed to be 25%. So in all honesty, you're only looking at about 5% difference in the price of the beans that they would be paying had nothing ever happened. So I'm not real sure how that factors into it, but uh, yes, we've taken quite a bit off of it and the demand remains phenomenal for all feed ingredients. I mentioned it before, but it appears that they have factored in a maximum corn and soybean crop with minimum weather premium right now. Uh, very little, and of course we got a, a pretty good surprise, about a million acres more in the corn market from, uh, from last week's uh, acreage report. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's not much factored into the corn at all. We saw that uh, through the last four years, 301 to 318 is about the lowest that we've seen the corn crop get under the best conditions. Uh, this one, even though good, probably won't have a great deal of uh, increased carry out to it. Okay, we'll come back in a moment. We'll take a look at our livestock trade too. Remember, we had uh, limit up trade here last weekend as we went into the weekend on uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if there's follow through or not. There yep. was earlier. There was a little the bit. The grains have <laughs> fallen. We'll see what the cattle are doing when we come back. Well, Chris Swift joins us in studio, and he is with Swift uh, Trading in Nashville right now. Okay, I want to take a look here at our uh, livestock market. Okay. We had the, what, first two contracts on live cattle Friday, closed limit up. Limit up. Three bucks higher. Mm -hmm. First contract in feeder cattle Friday, limit up, limit up four mm -hmm. and a half dollars higher. Yep. That means expanded limits, right? Uh, that is correct. Okay. Let's dive into it. <laughs> Live cattle right now on the August contract, we're up $1.58 at 108.30 per hundredweight. So we are seeing follow through buying here. We have the October contract up $1.03. Whoops, now 78 higher, now 76 higher at 110.78. And now we have December trading 20 higher at 113.90. Keep that in mind, the nearby August far outpacing the deferred contracts here. Uh, let's take a look at the feeder cattle trade this morning. Here we go with a look at August, which is now $1.23 higher at $152.55. And we have that September contract $1.48 higher at $152.43. So triple digit gains across the board on the feeder cattle side. The June live cattle contract dropped off. 
It did. It's gone. Let's go. So did that mean anything? Um, not really. Uh, they traded some 107 cash cattle on Friday, and I think the board closed at 107. So again, on equal basis, that was at one time $23 positive come in within less than a dollar of closing it. Now we see that we've had a big basis change in all of them because we're dead even with the October contract now and carrying a slight premium in the back months. So we're weeding through the wall of cattle and we know that from this point forward, although we may uh, always gonna have the elevated number of cattle there, we won't have the double increase from the cow bursts that we saw uh, in the 13-14 time frame. So where we had that elevated cow retention mm -hmm. uh, back in those times, those are the wall of cattle that we're working through right now, the last part of them. That uh, placements number in that last cattle on feed report? It was a little high. It that? was a little higher than what we had anticipated it yeah. to be. And, and June could probably be higher too. And that's drought cattle. That's probably cattle coming in out of the Kansas, uh, North Texas area drought. We noted that Kansas was up a little bit more on their on feed numbers and uh, that North Texas had seen quite a few more receipts of under 600 pound animals. Animals, so. All right, well, let's take a look at lean hogs All here right. uh, while I have you here in the studio. All right, let's go take a look at the big board, and we currently have the July contract. 47 higher, we're now trading at 83.35, August 27 higher at 76.72. The deferred still lower, Chris. We're down 48 on October, down 27 on December. Mm. So uh, real quickly, what's with this spread here going on? Well, the hogs and pigs report showed us we've got a lot of pigs coming. Still in the third and fourth quarter are gonna be heavier for uh, hog production. And so right now we've still got great demand for it. Um, I would dare to say that if any country was wanting to try to miss the tariffs, they'd be buying as much pork and uh, product as they possibly can before the tariffs actually go into effect. That is one big spread. Yes, and we'll have to watch it that very closely. All right, well, thank you for all the comments. Absolutely. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, glad to do it, Marlon. All right, Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated.